The artist, Shaz, is from Zimbabwe. And we're presently watching uh, a political dysfunction play out with the Mugabe effort to defeat the elections in Zimbabwe. So in each of these, he has distilled a point both in text and in image. Our fear is their best weapon. Now this is a topic, it's a phrase that could have as easily been the American Civil Rights Movement. I mean, it basically says, if you want to make a political change, you have to dare to do it. That as long as you're afraid to contest the injustice, the injustice will prevail. So this is a clarion call to be fearless. DRC here stands for the Democratic Republic of Congo. This piece could, has, could have as easily been about Sierra Leone or Liberia a few years ago. Because in all of those places, mineral wealth was being used to underwrite wars that essentially were tied to private greed and power hungerness. So here you have the diamonds, and there you have the blood and the balance which is equating them. Diamonds for blood, something to be challenged again. This one calls for us to remember the Rwanda uh, genocide. And that is such a powerful image and such an extraordinary event in all of our lifetimes to have watched and been witness to that, that this piece uses the Mende helmet mask to call us to remember, and by remembering to challenge us to try and not allow such a thing to happen again. Medals of Dishonor is immediately clear. It requires a minimum of commentary. It's a soldier's jacket, a high-ranking commander's jacket with the medals of honor and skulls. They're medals of honor earned by death. <coughs> Beware of some masks. When you try to pull them off, you realize it's their face. This is really uh, a comment on, uh, on self-deception. And actually, it might also bear a, a relationship to Mugabe who was genuinely a great man at a moment, but who seems to have lost his bearings along the way. And now, the face he wears is the face he believes in. It's simply not a face that is in touch with the world and the moment where we are. So he cannot take the face off because his own self-deception has become the face. So this piece calls upon us to really look at despotism and the people who carry it out and to ask the question, is it really the person you see or has that person become so lost to their own humanity that they are the mask now? So there's a, a sharp one. The last one flag is about uh, political uh, failure and the bloodshed that it costs. So that's what those pieces are. Now, the remaining piece is a three-part video titled Ruptures, which is the work of Salim Makurian. Salim is an Ethiopian, and she is a daughter of a priest of the Ethiopian, Ethiopian Orthodox Church. She said that uh, the use of the three cameras was strongly inspired by the tradition of the triptych that she'd grown up with in the Ethiopian church. So we have counterposed on the opposite wall an 18th century Ethiopian triptych from our collection uh, that you might look at. And adjacent to it is an accordion book of hymns, which is also from the Ethiopian church an 18th century. On the screen on the opposite side is uh, a 22 minute piece on three cameras which traces major move 
spent in Ethiopian history over a little more than a hundred years. The starting point of the video is the uh, battle at Adjoa in 1896 when the Ethiopians defeated the Italians in that large effort by which Ethiopia managed to never be colonized. So it starts with the royal family and a heroic moment, and then it gives a back flash. In the back flash, it relates those to the national myth, uh, national story, perhaps say the national narrative of uh, Ali Selassie and the relationship to the uh, Queen of Sheba and Menelik as the first king, the first emperor of Ethiopia. So you get this flashback to the Empress and Menelik II. Menelik II uh, put together the land and area that is present day Ethiopia in the third half of the 19th century. Then you sort of come forward to the colonial era, and in the colonial era period, you see the emperor, because Ethiopia remained free of colonization, and then you see the unraveling of the colonial era when the African states organize the, uh, uh, the, the union of African unity the organization of African unity. So you see that, and you see them collecting in Addis Ababa, which was the first place in 63 where that Congress convened. And that was the high hope we had of movement towards the uh, United States of Africa. Didn't happen so easily. You see it counterplayed at two or three different points with the African Union which is the newest organization, the newest effort to try to get to the same place of continental unity. And in between that, you see representation of the period of the Dur, when the government of Hali Mariam in Jistu uh, put in place a Marxist regime that displaced the old imperial government and that uh, brought a period of exceeding distress to Ethiopia that didn't solve the problems that were there in the imperial era. Then you see the fall of the imperial era, and that's sort of marked again by another brief reference to the organization of, to the African Union. And then you're in Addis, and, and, and you're in this Addis, which is uh, a sort of ordinary looking contemporary city on one count, and then the bulls in the street on the other count, and then the great garbage heaps. The garbage heaps are painful to look at, but they're actually very telling in our times. That garbage heap that you see in Addis could have been Mexico City, Cairo. It could have been almost any really big city in the developing world. And those people who scavenge that site and recycle what can be recycled from it, they do that in all of those places. So that comment on the moment is one that could apply to several different places. And it does not actually have a single point of view in the end. Instead, it intends to give you these bits of information in a way that juxtaposes them and asks you to wrestle with them. So I think that's sort of how Salim would position the piece in the end. So those are the five pieces, uh, the five bodies of work represented by the five artists in the exhibition. The exhibition will be here through the month of July, and I hope you will have an opportunity to 
bring others to come and see 